Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Inside Fanatics Brush. I'm your host, Matsko, here to take you once again through Fanatics' performance through the LEC Summer Split. This time covering week 2 of the split, Fnatic was going against their first big challenge versus SK on Sunday, starting first against Rogue, being their first game on Saturday, who hasn't been really on the best form so far. Right from the draft stage, it's very hard to understand what Rogue is trying to do. Picking champions that don't really fit their style and that require high level performance teams to be able to actually, well, bring something to the table. The Senna, the Nidalee, combined with the Renekton and the Azir, Rogue must have forgotten that they're not T1 and they are more bottom of the table at the LEC. In exchange, Fnatic get all the picks they're comfortable with and get the Exodia draft right in front of Rogue. Even if Rogue get the first blood by some overaggression in the bot lane, Oscarnian, who's once more on weak side duty, still manages to win the Orn versus Renekton matchup in the beautiful 1v1 kill. This will put Rogue very quickly in an uncomfortable position as Razork also ganks bot lane within the same time. Fnatic continues to apply the pressure on the bot lane making sure that Noah is ahead as much as possible. At the end of laning phase he's already at 3-0-1 with a 2.3k gold advantage on the Senna. At this stage already of the game Fnatic is so ahead that they do pretty much whatever they want on the map putting pressure in the mid and the top side. And as if to make it worse, Rogue doesn't really seem to understand what Fnatic's comp does and decide to engage in the chokehold area and their side of the map. Jin and Oscar are very happy to engage in exchange, jumping onto all four Rogue members, getting two kills and transitioning directly onto the Baron. Once again, Fnatic show how efficient they are once they have the Baron buff and are pressuring mid and top side. Rogue are too far behind, incapable of fighting back, and Fnatic, very much aware of their advantage, use it to fold the game. The power of the engage combo will net Fnatic 4 quick kills in the enemy base, a triple kill for Humanoid, and the game folded in about 28 minutes. Not much more to say about the game, apart from the fact that every player in Fnatic was exceptional. A perfect way to get started before facing the big challenge of the week, SK Gaming. SK who also have been undefeated so far are trying to prove that they belong at the top of the standings. Their career in bot lane has so far been the highlight of their roster giving them impressive wins specifically against G2. Going against Fnatic, SK draft a rather strong team with the good Ezreal Brom combination, Maokai which is good Isma pick and Tristana who is one of the strongest meta mid champions. Fnatic again pick what they're comfortable with going with Hue for Humanoid, Kassanti Duty for a good man Oscarnin, and the Poke Virus for Noah. SK plays a very smart level 1 early game going into Fnatic's jungle. Isma gets the level 2 from Raptors and Humanoid, Oscarnin, Razork are both going into a 3v3 matchup. It gets very scrappy but Fnatic manages to get away with 2 kills for 1. However, Oscarnin, who is already playing a weak side matchup against Irrelevant, gets screwed by the RNG from the minion wave. On top of that, the chase into Isma forces Humanoid to go back into lane with half its HP, while Niski had the time to recall and TP back into lane. This will allow Isma to this time invoid Fnatic's jungle on the bot side and put Razork in an uncomfortable position having to invade Isma's blue as well. SK uses this advantage super well and plays the tempo correctly to create a 1v3 on the flashless humanoid. While the gold is even, SK is dictating the tempo, forcing Fnatic to answer SK's aggression. While Fnatic gets a good catch onto Irrelevant, Isma's ulti with Maokai will manage to catch both Razork and Noah and answer Irrelevant's lost with two kills for them. At this stage, SK has great tools to pressure the side lanes with 5 Void Grubs. Nonetheless, Fnatic refused to roll over and die and play the Herald Contest. While it looked very dicey for Razork who suddenly gets engaged on, Fnatic managed to pincer in SK, resulting in 3 kills, securing Herald, and somehow Razork surviving. At that moment, Fnatic manages to create for themselves a small advantage of 2k gold. However, their composition doesn't allow them for extended team fights. If SK kite backwards enough, they will manage to get the man advantage. 
The sideline pressure from SK forces Fnatic to make some mistakes, notably overchasing for Niski and allowing Irrelevant to push the bot sideline. SK are very well aware that it's complicated for Fnatic to take the Baron quickly and are not stressed even if they are a man down. This means that Niski is free to push the bot side tier 2, while Fnatic has to retreat from the Baron. The side lane pressure from SK forces Fnatic to answer and create a number disadvantage against SK, who uses it to pressure around the Baron. After chunking Fnatic's HP bars, they get a bit over too confident and decide to return to the Baron. Fnatic's wars give them all the information they need to contest for the Baron and gives an opportunity for Razork to steal the Baron. Which he does because... Like they're playing against the best mitre in the world. <laughs> this gives a massive advantage to Fnatic who's very happy to counterattack the pressure and get a top in for free. Despite Fnatic's advantage, SK will try to push them into a team fight, spotting Noah who's just recalled in mid lane. Making them retreat in their own jungle, SK wants to push the numbers advantage. However, the Hextech gates allow Noah to join his team very quickly and already deal damage on the backline. The team fight goes back and forth with members dying on both sides, however Noah and Humanoid are dealing as much damage as possible. Humanoid in particular manages to survive Irrelevance Engage and kites near the Gromp. Razor's survivability and great plays will not only allow him to catch Rahel and kill him, but also catch Irrelevant with a quick knockup as he retreats towards his team. Humanoid kites, kites, kites and forces Niski away. With Oskarnin, they quickly decide to DP into the enemy base. Being pushed by super minions, Niski can't do anything and Humanoid destroys him on the spot. Fnatic finished the week 2 with a solid 5-0 victory against a convincing SK that made it very difficult for them to close the game. Despite a draft that wasn't the easiest to execute, both Noah and Humanoid dealt immense amount of damage and played their poke as best as they could. SK understood their composition well, pressured their side lanes as much as possible, but a couple of mistakes cost them the game in the end. With a very solid 5-0 star into the split, I'd like to put the spotlight on Jun, our support. In my opinion, he's the best member of the team this year, having the most consistent performances across all the games played thus far. He's finding his place very well into the team, linking up well with his lane partner Noah, but also with Razork to bring in as much pressure onto the map and help Humanoid get forward. His engages has also been very solid, both in lane and during team fights whether it be on the Nautilus or on the rail. He's also very vocal in the game, consistently calling out summoner timers and other cooldowns. It's safe to say that the Fnatic community has completely embraced our Juanito and he is feeding on that energy himself. We'll definitely continue to support him and are always eager to see what will be up next for him. With that said, let's look into Week 3's opponents. And as usual, when one challenge is down, another one points its head, this time facing our almost eternal rivals, G2. Now G2 hasn't completely brushed off the rust from MSI, even though they've managed to gather a few wins, getting them at a 3-2 result. Their wins haven't been the most convincing, mostly been abusing per macro from their opponents, or one player usually making a great flank or play in the mid to late game. This player usually being Broken Blade. I asked you guys this week what you would think of that matchup and the majority of you guys would say it would be absolute cinema. Not only would a win here would be nice because winning against G2 is always a pleasure, but it would continue in comforting the idea that Fnatic is really at the top of the LEC the split. Fnatic will also be facing MDK on Saturday, who haven't been the most impressive team so far, sharing a bottom standings at a 1-4 record. Throne leads and loss of identity have completely destroyed the roster and they've completely lost their recipe to victory. This means we could potentially see Fnatic pushing their record to 7-0 at the end of the week. I personally am looking forward to it because I will be in the LEC studio this weekend. I will try to record as much live footage to put it into the next video and make sure to scream my lungs out to support our boys in orange and black. But this will be all for this week's recap. Let me know what you thought about the games this week, specifically the matchup versus SK. Thank you again for all the support you've shown for this new format. It really means a lot to me. And as usual guys, always fanatic.